Thank you so much for joining me. In this video I'm asking the question, are cheap rechargeable USB arc lighters any good for lighting fireworks? Let's find out. On paper at least, these look quite appealing. They're relatively cheap. There are so many of these for sale on Amazon, you can pick them up really easily. Most importantly maybe is there's no gas to worry about refilling. Instead you recharge these via a USB socket in the bottom. So Curiosity finally got the better of me and I decided to go onto Amazon and order a couple to try out. I actually picked two lighters to try. First up we have the VHE, who knows if that's how it's actually pronounced. This was $10.99 when I ordered it, it's currently $9.99. This one had something that I thought could be quite useful and that's a bendable end, but it's so cheaply made that it is next to useless. The other one that I bought was this one. This isn't branded as such, but on Amazon the listing says that the brand, if you search for it, is Wolpaz, W-O-L-E-P-A-Z. It was $8.95 when I ordered it and it's currently $9.45. I'm going to refer to this one by the name on the box it came in, which is A-Gun. With loads of USB lighters for sale on Amazon, I picked this particular style because having a source of ignition away from your hand and also having a handle of sorts to hold uh, makes lighting fireworks at arm's length a lot easier than, for example, using the conventional style of lighter, which you can't operate very well with the glove and brings you closer to the fireworks. I also wanted to see by buying two if there were any design differences between different brands and in actual fact there are some differences which we'll start to see as this video unfolds. So let's take a look a little bit closer at the individual units. Uh, I'm going to start uh, with the VHE. This came in a blister pack and included the small USB patch cable which you probably won't need. The handle includes battery status lights, an on off button and also a push to fire button. Taking a closer look at the head now, you can see the electrodes on this one are set within the head rather than sticking out. When activated you get a nice pink arc. The A-Gun next and despite being cheaper this actually came in a nicer box. The poorly written instructions here are as useless as they are entertaining. If you want a bit of fun by all means pause this and have a read. This also has a handle with charging lights, an on off button and also a push to fire button. And taking a close look at the end of this one, you can see the electrodes here are more pointing out of the end than exposed. And like the VHE, this also produces a nice pink coloured arc when fired. Both lighters have a safety timer on them for safety reasons, which means if you don't fire them after a certain number of seconds, they will turn off. As you can see here, I've switched them on and left them, and it's only about seven seconds. It's not so much of a problem with the VHE because you can simply press the fire button and it comes back to life and fires straight away, although that defeats the object of having a sleep timer in the first place. With the A gun, it's a little bit more of a pain. You have to physically switch the unit off and then on before it will fire again. So let's take a closer look at these in operation to see how they actually work. Starting with the VHE, and even pressed against some paper, it takes a while for the arc to burn it. So you can get an idea already then with this type of lighter that whatever you're wanting to light really should go between the electrodes. The A-Gun does a little better since you can press it against things, but again in this clip, note that the paper itself is being burned through in a very specific location, but it's not catching fire like it would with a gas lighter. So this led to an initial hunch that I had because of the very localised nature of the arc on these, that perhaps you had to be quite accurate when lighting your Visco fuse. So to test this out, let's head out to the garden. What I'm doing here, this is with the VHE, it's holding some Visco inside the prongs, as if I've overshot the fuse in other words. It's not igniting, as even at that small distance it's too far away from the arc. And in a related test, here what I'm doing is moving a piece of fuse through the arc backwards and forwards to see how strong the arc is. As you can see it's possible to move the visco through the arc without lighting it. 
It needs either a few passes to get it going or to be kept within the arc for a little longer. The A gun fared a bit better here because there's less of a gap between the prongs for the fuse to go between. You can also see, as I light more and more fuse, that because it needs to go between the electrodes, it's impossible not to get the lighter covered in soot. Soot bunging up a piezoelectric nighter is a major reason many gas lighters die when used with fireworks, unless you're careful to avoid the jets of flame going into the end of the nozzle. So it's an obvious concern here with exposed electrodes. However, I think the higher voltage of these units means they can stand a fair bit of uh, coating with soot. Also, conversely, having exposed electrodes means that they're easier to clear up. As you can see here, a little bit of kitchen towel, cleaning the ends, and it seems good to go again. Being windproof is a critical feature of any lighter if you're using them in the UK. Using this out in the garden, there was a bit of a breeze. As we say here in Suffolk, there was a bit of a wind up. Uh, it was fine. Here I'm going a more extreme test. I'm using a handheld fan and blowing it quite close to the unit. I wouldn't say that the spark here is completely impervious to the wind. It's buffeting about a bit, but this is quite an extreme test. Generally speaking, I think you'll be fine with this. Speaking of the weather, as we like to do a lot here in the UK, I also ran the electrode part of these underneath a tap to see if these would still spark when the ends were wet. Not surprisingly, once the electrodes get wet, there's no spark at all. Although both units, when they were dried with a bit of kitchen towel, sprang immediately back into life. However, this is a bit of an academic test because with the build quality on these being so bad, and with these containing a battery and a high voltage element, I simply wouldn't risk taking these out in rainy conditions. And when I tested these under a tap, I was obviously very careful to keep the water away from the main part of the unit itself. Let's do a field test now. The idea here is to try a lighter out at arm's length and also in gloved hands, a bit more like a real firework display would be. Out of the two, I picked the A gun to use here because with its exposed electrodes and smaller gap, I figured I'd get a better chance of lighting the fuse. Some of you will, I think, already be getting an idea of a potential problem brewing here. We've already seen just a moment ago how localized the arc is on these and how you only have to be a little bit of distance away for it not to work. We all know how small and thin fuses are. So if it sounds like it's gonna be quite a difficult job to light a small fuse with a small arc at arm's length, then you're not wrong. Let's have a quick look at how this went. It looks on my first attempt like I'm deliberately missing the fuse to make a point here, but I promise you I'm not. What's happening here actually is very interesting. It turns out from decades of hand lighting fireworks using lighters with very good flames, that is where the fuse takes immediately, I'm so conditioned to putting a lighter to a fuse and immediately retiring and getting away from the firework that I'm not used to what happens when the fuse doesn't actually ignite the first time. Does that make sense? So let me just show you that again. So what's happening here is I'm going to the fuse to light it and instinctively moving away expecting the fuse to have taken but actually it hasn't. Then the sleep timer kicked in on this and it went off so I had to annoyingly switch it off and on which was slightly fiddly to do. On my second attempt what I'm doing here is overcoming my instinct to run away and keep the arc a little bit longer on the fuse to get it going and although it's not instant this does go a little bit better as you can see here and one final test before lying down from all the excitement was to fully charge both of these units and see how many firings we could get with the a gun i did 50 firings and that's a complete firing where you press the button and it goes for about seven seconds before it cuts out then refiring it again I got to 50 of those with the battery still showing maximum, so I gave up at that point. With the VHE, however, I found that after just 15 or so firings, the battery was already showing halfway down. And in fact, this only got to 27 firings before it gave up completely. Some conclusions then, and first of all, looking at the two specific units on test, and this is a very small sample of a very large range of cheap lighters on Amazon, I can confidently take the VHE and throw it in the bin because 
aside from the fact that the bendable head is just a complete gimmick as you can see there it's just rubbish the fact that this only lasts 27 times and it's, it's new 27 times before the battery gives up makes it next to useless as a firework lighter of course if you've only got a few fireworks to light that's fine but if you've got a selection box of lots of things in you've got sparklers and so on things like that this doesn't really cut the mustard so that is going to end up in the bin the winner of this small test is the a gun but the winner of what exactly what i mean by that is if you look at the general question of are these any good at lighting fireworks the answer really is a bit vague it's it depends so let's try and narrow it down a bit if we can firstly can you light sparklers with these i mentioned sparklers because the amazon listings all show people holding a sparkler uh, very happy that they've lit it with their usb lighter the answer is yes you can just for the record here is the said lighter lighting a sparkler and if you ask the question can you light firework fuses with these yes you can you've seen my footage just now these are capable of lighting visco so the answer to that is yes however there is a big but and it's this with fireworks by their very nature you need to be lighting things at arm's length you need that safety margin built in this is where these fall apart slightly because the very very localized nature of this arc coupled with how thin fuses are and exacerbating all this by sticking at arm's length which means for middle-aged people at least slightly shaky further away your eyesight's never quite as good it all becomes a bit difficult and look i know a younger person than me is going to have steadier hands and better eyesight but in the absolute melee the chaos even of a big firework display when you've got the excitement the nervousness when you're under pressure to get something lit do you really want to be faffing around with something with a very very tiny arc trying to get something lit right at the end of your vision it's worth pointing out as well these give off no light at all so to use these in the dark you're going to have to have some kind of illumination either a head torch or carrying a torch as well it just all starts getting a little bit too complicated personally for bigger displays particularly where you have to get something lit say you're firing things in order from a list or to a timed list or you're firing fireworks one after the other or even overlapping them for that type of display personally I would stick to something with a really good indiscriminate flame that's going to light things immediately uh, even if you're just vaguely in the right area and that fuse will take so the classic example the cheapest most easy to find firework lighter that has stood the test of time is the trusty port fire if you take a look at this video clip you'll see a port fire in action you can see just how good the flame is and to prove a point let me light that same rocket fuse with a port fire so you can see just how easy this is if you're new to fireworks port fires you can pick up at any good firework shop even tesco was selling port fires for the last few years along with their fireworks you light the end of them and they burn with a pyrotechnic compound inside so once you've lit them you can't put them out that is a disadvantage of them but they last for three or four minutes from tesco these were costing around 30p each but a more realistic price from a main firework shop also with all the price rises going on at the moment budget for about a pound a port fire is a is a good bet however they're worth their weight in gold they really are a brilliant way to hand light fireworks another way to light fireworks would be with a gas torch whether that's a barbecue lighter or a turbo lighter something with a good windproof flame the ultimate gas lighter of course is the rothy we can see my rothy here just to prove a point let's go back to this same rocket and the same fuse obviously a different fuse for the purposes of filming this but take a look at how easily the rothy gets this fuse going so you've seen a port fire and you've seen a rothy with these images fresh in your mind let me show you the usb lighter again i think you can see from those video clips why having used port fires and a rothy for so long i'm not overly impressed with usb lighters because there are such 
better and easier ways to get your fuse lit, safer ways as well. That said, I can see one potential use for these and that is as a casual lighter. What I mean by this is if you've got a selection box and you've got lots of smaller fireworks, say you're taking them out one by one to let off in a very relaxed manner, importantly, you're under no pressure lighting things to get things lit quickly and you've got a torch, you can take your time, there's the fuse, let's get it lit. I think that would be quite effective in that kind of scenario. And let's face it, if you've spent, say, 15, 20 pounds on the selection box, you don't want to then go out and spend 70 pounds on a giant blowtorch to light it with. That would be overkill. Also, I will say that they are a step up from this. This is a throwaway gas lighter that you'll find in your corner shop or the garage. And I, there are so many people particularly YouTubers who are still using these to light their fireworks. The problem with these is these are not the slightest bit windproof. So they are just not suitable for the British weather. Another problem is you can't use these with gloved hands. And because your fingers are very close to the flame and therefore the fuse, you will always certainly end up with a burnt thumb, particularly if lighting rockets. So one plus point is that these USB lighters are a step up from these. The final question and perhaps most important one of all in all of this is what I recommend that you spend your money on a USB arc lighter as opposed to spending the same amount of money or less even on a gas powered lighter. The answer is no, I wouldn't. My recommendation would always be for a gas lighter. By gas lighter, just to qualify that, I mean any lighter with an intense blue flame, something that's marketed as being windproof. So a windproof barbecue lighter or a turbo lighter, something along those lines. Not lighters that are often shaped and sized like this, but have a yellow flame like this. Those are designed mainly to light gas hobs. They're good at that, but they are rubbish at lighting fireworks. So anything with a turbo flame. As we've seen, the indiscriminate nature of that flame makes it so much easier to light fireworks at arm's length. You only have to be vaguely near the fuse for them to go off. Also, I don't think there's any safety benefits to these either. You might think, well, having a gas lighter in your pocket is a bit dangerous, but would you swap a tried and tested simple design, a gas lighter, for what is essentially a rechargeable battery of dubious build quality with switches, high voltage element, and so on? I don't think this is any safer. It gets worse if you think about Guy Fawkes and New Year's Eve, the weather in the UK, it's so damp, there's moisture everywhere. I'm not sure that I'd really want to trust one of these in such conditions. So for me personally, my vote is with a gas lighter every time. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you found it useful. I hope that it's helped to inform your buying choices when it comes to lighters. If anything, if all this video has done is discourage you from spending and potentially wasting money on a USB lighter and either sticking to a gas powered lighter, port fires, or even thinking about spending some money and investing towards a Rothy, you know you want to, they're worth every penny, honestly, then my job today has been done. As always, if you have any comments or questions, I'd love to hear from you. Let me know in the comments below, or if you are a member of my online forum over at UKFR, then please feel free to get in touch there. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.